We're also seeing something else that's very important. We're seeing the, 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 the emergence of all these collectives, these tribal enclaves, which is one of my big interests right now. That this gets us into the what's a family soul and what's a collective soul and uh, some of the other questions that you asked later. Yeah. Okay. We'll get to it. Um, what What have been your most difficult challenges and how have you faced them? I think that's a good interest point for readers. As I said before, and I'm. I don't mean to be sound puffed up or anything, but it's it's very difficult to be a polymath. It's very difficult in a society that values specialism and minute expertise and splits everything up into smaller and smaller specialisms. It's very difficult to be a generalist and and someone who's done enough has enough depth in a bunch of different fields. I mean, I can talk to you about math, I can talk to you about philosophy, I can talk to you about literature, and do, do you understand me? And that's, um, that's, not, that's not necessarily, uh, that, that's not thought well of in our society. Like, I mean, I'm a decathlon or a pentathlon person, right? <laughs> I'm not the best sprinter in the world, but I'm good enough, do you understand me, to put things together. Right. And synth synthesizing has just been the whole name of, of what I do. That has a difficulty associated. Um, I also just, I grew up moving on all the time. And that persisted into adulthood. And that's, that means that even though I've had a, an intellectually and emotionally wonderful, adventurous life, and I'm approaching three quarters of a century, and I'm in pretty good shape here, um, I don't like have a big following. The conduit metaphor paper that I wrote in 1977, if you look at Google Scholar, you will see 3,770 citations. That is astronomical. There are 1,100 citations in the last, you know, five years, which means that that was something hugely groundbreaking, but I'm not around to benefit from it. That's challenging. Mm. I would very much like to write a book about it, but I don't have graduate students to help, and I have to support it by the, you know, doing my own work or whatever. Do, do you understand me? I don't have the. I, it has been wonderful being able to go without institutional affiliations wherever I was led, but it has its downside. Right. The downside is I don't have, you know, the support. Yeah, I mean, I haven't written 20 books and I'm a full professor or something like that, which I easily would have or could have been if I had stayed. See, there was no internet until 1995. So from 1978, when I left, through 1995, I had no idea that anybody had paid any attention at all to anything that I had written. In 95, when I got on the internet, I, I found out, oh goodness, George Lakoff said I helped found cognitive science, and you can look in, you can look in, um, look on Wikipedia, there's an article, and uh, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> I just figured people would steal the ideas and not give me credit, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but that didn't happen. Um, and, and the, uh, the conduit metaphor is a profoundly important thing because basically our language has a model, a folk model embedded in it of how it works. And that model is grossly, terribly wrong and misleading. It gets us in trouble all over the place. Hmm. Does, it, does it affect our, our, our political speech? It affects everything. And it's, it's a tricky thing to talk about because I have to kind of get you into a paradigm shift to, to uh, but I mean, the English language believes that what we do when we communicate is put, put our meaning into the words, send the words over to you like a package, and you unpack them and get my meaning out of those words. That don't happen. Words are scratches. I'm squeaking at you now. These are just squeaks. <laughs> Just noises. They have no insides. Do you, do you understand me? No. And you take those noises and you use them in this very sophisticated way as instructions to build emotional and conceptual structures in your head. 
And God knows if they're the same thing that was in my head oh, yeah. when I made these noises. But everything in the way the English language talks about itself says that I put the meaning in the words. And that if you didn't get it out, you're at fault. Because I said it. Hmm. I don't know. I, you know, I, I, I found about 140 different expressions that were uh, they're just it's pervasive uh, and I mean it's it's beyond me right now to try to trot out a bunch of examples but okay 